The Bible interprets that beast as a king or a kingdom. So a kingdom is rising up out of the sea. You are about to watch a video in which Pastor Mark Finley explains how to understand the book of Revelation as Adventist. You know, by the grace of God, we have the gift of understanding what is written in the scripture, especially what is written in the books of Daniel and Revelation. So without wasting much time, let's get right into the video. Have you ever wondered how to make sense out of the book of Revelation? Have you ever thought, I'm going to put the book of Revelation aside because it's just not understandable. It's a book of mystic symbols, a book of confusing beasts, a book that's more frightening than encouraging. During my over 50 years of ministry, many people have approached the book of Revelation that way. But I'm going to make the book of Revelation simple for you today. There are three major principles to understand Revelation. If you understand those principles, you are going to understand this book. It's going to be one of the most exciting books in the Bible. Principle number one, the word revelation means an unfolding. It means a revealing. Something that is revealed is not closed. So approach the book of Revelation with the sense that God has revealed his truth in this book for end times. And I give God credit for making plain that which is most important. So revelation, here's your first principle. It is understandable. It is a revelation. Principle number two, revelation is written in a prophetic code. It is written with symbols. And for every symbol that God gives, he has given an explanation or an interpretation for that symbol. Did you get that point? If God gives a symbol in Revelation, he gives an explanation for that symbol. Let me give you some examples. Revelation chapter 13, God says this, I saw another beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his crowns the name of blasphemy. Now notice, I saw another beast rising up out of the sea. That seems strange, a strange beast with seven heads and ten horns rising up out of the sea. But if you understand the prophetic key, if you understand the meaning of that book of Revelation and the meaning of those symbols, it just makes perfect sense. So what is a beast in Bible prophecy? According to Daniel, and the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation are companion books, and the symbols in Daniel and Revelation are consistent. So in Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, it says, The beast which you saw is a king. In chapter 7, verse 23, it says it's a kingdom. So in Bible prophecy, a beast represents a king or a kingdom. So when the Bible says, I saw another beast rise up out of the sea, the Bible interprets that beast as a king or a kingdom. So a kingdom is rising up out of the sea. Then the Bible says, what is the sea? Revelation chapter 17, verse 15 says, the waters of the sea that you saw are multitudes, nations, peoples, and tongues. So the book of Revelation identifies the sea as peoples. So when a beast rises up out of the sea, it is a kingdom rising up out of a populated area of the earth. What about this idea of horns? What does that represent? In the Bible, horns represent power. So here is a powerful nation or a powerful political or religious power that rises up in a peopled area. We find these symbols throughout the book of Revelation. One of the things that I have done in my studies is to identify 25 major symbols in the book of Revelation and given their biblical meaning. For example, you have in the book of Revelation uh, the idea of the dragon. What does that represent? Well, according to the Bible, the dragon represents, according to Revelation 12, verse 7 and verse 9, it represents the devil. You have a lamb in the book of Revelation. What does that represent? Of course, you would know a lamb represents Jesus. Now, if you would like a copy of these 25 symbols and their meaning in the book of Revelation, 
All you need to do is put a comment in the below. Just write a comment below. And if we have enough comments that come in, um, we'll put a link in and you can download 25 symbols and their meaning for the book of Revelation. I'd love to give that to you, so be sure to comment. And incidentally, too, if you really like this video, push it out to your friends, share it with them, and subscribe to our videos because we have so many more. So, three principles on understanding the book of Revelation, how to make sense. Number one, understand that it is written in symbols, and if you understand those symbols, you can apply them and you unlock the key to the mystery of the book of Revelation. You're going to love my guide to understanding those symbols, so be sure to comment below. Now, here's the second principle. Understand the great controversy theme in the book of Revelation. Every major line of prophecy in the book of Revelation portrays a controversy between Christ and Satan, between Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and Satan, the dragon, and of course, the beast. And so understand when you're reading Revelation that there is this great controversy between good and evil, great controversy between Christ and Satan. Read it with those eyes and it, it'll come to life to you. Thirdly, recognize that in every chapter of Revelation, Jesus is front and center. Look at the book of Revelation through the eyes of Christ. Now, I'm going to go over Revelation every single chapter and show you Jesus at the center and show you Jesus at the center of prophecy, and you will be able to make sense out of Revelation. It'll leap off the pages and your heart will thrill. So stay with me. The Bible says this is the revelation of Jesus. Where did Jesus get it? Revelation 1 verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John. So the book of Revelation is born in the heart of God and God gives it to Jesus and Jesus gives it to the angel and the angel wings his way from worlds afar and gives it to John and John writes it down. So we read the book of Revelation with a sense of awe. We read it with a sense of wonder because we know it comes from the heart of God. All right, I agree perfectly with what Pastor McFinley said concerning how to understand the book of Revelation. You know, I think this idea also applies to the book of Daniel. And uh, in the video, Pastor McFinley said something about 25 symbols in the book of Revelation and their meaning. In fact, I have received a copy of this document and I want to share with you right now, right here. So let's go ahead and look at these symbols and their meaning as found in the book of Revelation or as found in the Bible, all right? So let's get right into it. So these are the symbols Pastor McFinley shared and their meaning. The biblical writers presented prophecy in a prophetic code that uses symbolism. The reason God has given us prophecy in symbolic code was to protect his word from those who would have destroyed it if they had clearly understood that it exposed their sins and revealed their falsehoods. God also employs prophetic symbols to condense space in the sacred word. According to a Chinese proverb, a picture is worth a thousand words. Prophetic symbols are God's pictures of the future. Since all scriptures is inspired by God, that's 2 Timothy 3.16, and no scripture is of any private interpretation, 2 Peter 1 verse 20, we must allow the Bible to interpret itself as we compare passages of scripture with each other, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13. The same God who inspired the biblical authors to write his messages to humanity has given us the keys to understand what the prophets presented. So friends, let's move on and look at the symbols with their meanings. And as I said, this is not my work. It is Pastor McFinley's work. So you can also reach out to him if you want a copy. So on your screens, you would find symbol, text, and explanation. And the symbol number one is beast. So what does beast mean? Um, the explanation given was king or kingdom. 
you'll find that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 17 and 23. So, beast represents king or kingdom. Number two, sea. And what does it represent? It represents people, multitudes, nations. And you're going to find that in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Symbol number three is winds. And it means calamity, strife, conflict, destructive forces of evil spirits. And you're going to find references in Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 32, and Revelation 7, verse 1. Symbol number four, horns. It represents powers or kingdoms. You're going to find references in Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, and Daniel 7, 7. Symbol number five, lamb, which represents Jesus. And you see the reference there. Symbol number six, woman. And of course, this one is talking about pure woman. And it represents Christ church. And you find the references there. Symbol number seven, another woman. By this time, harlot. And it represents apostate church. You would find the references there. Symbol number eight, wine which represents false doctrine or false teachings, all right? And you would find references in Revelation 17, verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Symbol number 9, crowns, and it represents authority, dominion, or rulership. Symbol number 10, dragon, and that represents Satan, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. Symbol number 11, eyes. It represents understanding. Symbol number 12, stars. Represents angels. Symbol number 13, lampstands, which represents churches. Revelation 1, verse 21. Symbol number 14, rain or water, which represents Holy Spirit's cleansing power. And you're going to find the references there. Number 15, wind, which of course represents Holy Spirit's life-changing force. Okay, so this is the second wind we're talking about. The first wind was calamity, strife, conflict, destructive forces of evil spirit. But this time, this wind represents Holy Spirit's life-changing forces. So the context is going to tell you which wind the author was referring to, all right? Number 16 is oil, which represents Holy Spirit's healing grace. And sometimes, too, some people say it represents the Holy Spirit. Symbol number 17, fire which represents God's presence manifest in the Holy Spirit. Symbol number 18, white garments, which represents righteousness of Christ in the life. Symbol number 19, sword, which represents God's word. Symbol number 20, seed, which also represents God's word. Symbol number 21, harvest, which is end of world symbol number 22 great image which represents kingdoms or empires daniel 2 verse 31 32 38 to 44 stone cut out without hands which represents christ kingdom the second coming of jesus we have symbol number 24 to be rock which represents jesus Symbol number 25, prophetic day, which is one year. So friends, I think these are accurate and we thank Pastor McFinley for putting these together. So as I said, if you want a copy of this, you can reach out to Pastor McFinley via his email address or you can send me an email so that I can share the copy I received with you. All right. So if this video was helpful, I would encourage you to also share with somebody or share with a friend, all right? 
Thank you for watching. This is all that I had to share with you today. My name is Brother Lawrence. See you next time.